How many guys are there? How many guys? Me and you. Versus what? Four, five, four. <laughs> Literally four guys. Bro. Jeffrey gets angry and starts fights, especially when he goes out drinking. It makes him feel so powerful to get loud and aggressive. Adonis. Adonis doesn't fight, unless he has to. He understands street fights are unpredictable, and he knows that fighting is high risk with minimal reward. And yet, Adonis trains. He prepares himself for the day that he doesn't have a choice other than to protect himself and his tribe. All of the advice online on Reddit on YouTube is absolutely trash. Men come fearing for their safety, and the advice you're given is, uh, run away, run, run away, make sure you run away. Uh, check, the, check the laws in your country, bullshit, bro. We're gonna go into detail in this video, and I'm gonna literally tell you like what hit to throw at the guy when you have to. My name is Hamza. I help young men go through the Jeffrey to Adonis transformation through self-improvements. Scroll down right now, click on the subscribe and the post notification button. It's a win-win for both of us. Hey, amazing bro. <laughs> you dropped a guy. This guy just came up to us out of nowhere. Bro, three ribs. <laughs> ribs was on the menu. For me personally, most of the potential fights and arguments and aggressive situations have been in the nightclub environments, like the nighttime alcohol involved environments. Because this is literally the prime environment. It's fueled by alcohol. There's usually hot girls there, so all the guys are like weirdly horny and like testosterone's probably going up. We're all competing. Like obviously no one's thinking this, but we all somewhat are competing to be the alpha male who gets the bitches of the night. It's a very raw place to be. And so we're dancing in a circle. Me, two of my male friends, and three of my female friends. We're all dancing in a circle. And out of nowhere, this drunk guy like stumbles in, like brushes into some people. Don't really think much of it. You know, he's a bit of a dickhead. So I think we we say something like this. I say something out loud, like, oh, what a what a what a dick and he kind of like you know stumbles off like it's it's like 10 p.m and he's at this point so obviously he's, he is a dumbass right out of nowhere this other guy comes up and he's like that's my mate that's my mate you're talking about within literally like a second this shit is kicked off and it's gonna get like aggressive now my friend did something like a 10 out of 10 move right here i'm not even gonna lie my friend just literally walked behind this guy and just held his arms like almost like he was almost pretending like you know he was like holding the guy and he just kind of like slid his arm down and he just held both of his arms like this and i saw the guy like but my friend had him held. Like, good, good man. Thank you, Kai. <laughs> this guy's getting loud. He's got his arms behind him. He's like thrashing everywhere. Bouncer comes in, takes him out. Now, this was like an easy situation. This was like a low level situation. Let's go one step higher. This is in a different club. I'm in the smoking area and I'm speaking to this cute girl. And, you know, it's going well. I'm flirting with her, everything. Some Asian guy comes to the stands, like to the side of us. This is the first time a brown skin. Okay, I've always, I've only ever had problems with white guys. It's just how it is. Like, white guys seem to like be more aggressive in these, like, you know, the drunk lad who, who drinks pints and shit. Never once has like a black or a brown guy ever even had an argument with me. This was the only time I can remember. This brown guy just stands to the side of us looking at me aggressively and he goes, shut up. What? Shut up, bro. What are you on about, bro? He wants to speak to this girl or he knows her. Maybe he's dating her or something. I've just approached his girlfriend or something. Bro, do you know what I do? I'm like, all right, I walk away. Now, you might think that, oh, that's, that's not the alpha male thing to do, Hamza. But I actually would think that it is because in your comfortable spot right now, you're sat on your, your crusty computer chair, you're nice and safe. It's nice to think like, oh, Hamza, you should have hit him, Hamza. It's nice to be a little f***ing spurg like that. But when you're in that moment and people die in these f***ing moments, I'd say I did the alpha male thing of just saying like, yeah, whatever. Bro, the girl's cute, but she's not even worth the anxiety and the discomfort of having even an argument with a guy, never mind actually hitting each other, never mind actually getting f***ing dropped by his friends. So I turn around, and I walk away. Later on in the night, I walk back into the smoking area. I'm speaking to some more bitches and everything. But then I see him and his group, like his f***ing group of like a lot of guys, like seven, eight guys, all in the corner. And this guy's just staring at me. He's pissed for some reason, boys. Like it wasn't even his girlfriend. Like she wasn't around at this point. She, she's just disappeared or something. He's just staring at me. And his friends are like talking to him and they're like pointing at me and everything. I'm getting f***ing worried. So I'm like patting my friends. Like, you know, my friend speaking to a bitch or something. So I like pat him. I'm like, bro, like f it's me, two or three. No, actually, I had a fair amount of friends on this night as well, actually. So it's a couple of my friends, a couple of his friends, and now it starts getting heated. His friends are coming up, and they're, like, you know, putting their arm around me, like, bro, what, 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 what did you do? Why is he so pissed off at you? Like, you do realize we're going to have to, like, do sh and like they were all Asian guys as well. We're all like almost like a couple of his friends were being real nice and we're like, we don't want to start or anything. What's going on? And I said, bro, like I'm never going to start a fight against an Asian guy. They seem to respect this because I'm, I'm being polite to them. I'm literally like putting my arm around them. I'm saying like, bro, like I, I might have spoke to his girlfriend or something. And they're saying, oh, I'm, I think they might have said like, oh no, it's not his girlfriend. Or, it might have been, but she wasn't around or anything. It's getting heated. My friends are speaking to him. You know, everyone's kind of doing this buddying up thing. We're like, no one really wants to fight, but everyone is on edge. And you can see like guys literally like cracking their knuckles and shit. we're getting ready. And to be honest, it just kind of diffuses. It's kind of anticlimactic, but it just kind of diffuses. His friends kind of say like, just kind of like, don't look at it towards him. My friends say to him, like, oh bro, come on, like, let's go get you a drink or some bullshit. 
this and his friends kind of go with him my friends go with me no problem that was like a medium situation that could have turned into like a full blown brawl potentially it didn't because of social skills which we will get into soon but that was like a medium level thing let's go one step higher so it's the end of the night again club alcohol related it's probably 3 a.m me and my friend my one friend are leaving the club we've just finished the night and we're gonna go get some chicken wings so we cross this big intersection so it's like a big ass road right and we're on one side of it we're going across and on the way other side like solid 20, 30 meters away, like some good distance away. There's like a group of people. And obviously like, you know, it's 3 a.m. You expect people to be like loud and drunk and everything. But there was like, you can tell the difference between like a, a drunk loud bitch compared to like a, a drunk aggressive guy. And we could hear that type of guy. Like this guy's like, okay, we look to the side. This guy's shirtless. So it's white guy, somewhat short. He's shirtless and he's just like, yelling and he's shouting. And he's shouting at people and shit. So me and my friend are lit. We probably shouldn't have done this, but we kind of like shout over. We didn't say anything offensive, but we just kind of like encouraged it. We're like, yeah, hit them, bro. Like we were just shouting them bullshit. So I don't even remember what we said, but I don't remember particularly saying something offensive to him. But of course, this guy's drunk as fuck. He's shirtless. And he looks over to the side and he starts swearing at us. And he starts walking towards us like aggressively. Like he's like, he's pumping his fucking Conor McGregor type of shit. He's walking towards us. Like what the fuck is going to happen, bro? So he crosses from the way other side. Like this road is massive by the way he from the way other side of this road he crosses all the way towards us like it, it almost felt like kind of slow motion at this point where it felt like i was getting a hundred thoughts in my mind like, what the is gonna happen like what should i say we're almost like I, I almost felt like me and my friend were kind of like pussing out a little bit where we as he was coming closer we kind of like shouted nicer things like oh yeah like nice nice biceps bro or some some bullshit so he's walking towards us aggressively his friends are on the other side they haven't like really crossed over they're just kind of like looking at to see what's happening and i, I didn't even know what to think about it when he gets close to be honest you know what when he gets close I didn't think I had no thoughts, but I, I remember one specific thing that I did, which I, I said before, but one specific thing I did was this. I clicked my knuckles. He gets close without saying a single word he, with aggression. He comes and pushes my friend, pushing my friend with like with force. I didn't think about it. He's on the floor. Not my friend, but this drunk ass white guy. He's on the floor. Within a split second, I had hooked this guy with force, bro. I still remember the way that he spun, like he spun kind of like inside of himself, like a Beyblade, do you know what a blade Beyblade is, bro? Like, let it rip. Beyblade, Beyblade, let it rip. He spun like that, like this fool, crossed over this road. <laughs> I made him spin like a Beyblade. He falls down, like crashes down. He's like spurging out on the floor. His friends are running up, getting like proper aggressive and everything. And I specifically remember that one of his friends was massive, but he was like running towards me a bit, but he was like, you know what the fuck's going on? Why did you hit him? And I literally just said, yo, like he crossed the entire road. He came up and pushed my friend. Like, you know what I'm saying this? Again, social skills. This big ass guy, bro. And he's just kind of like, he kind of agrees with me. He just stops running towards me, goes towards his friend, like picks him up and me and my friend go and get chicken wings. Yo, what did he do when he came up? He's like bro, pushing me. Bro, he pushed me once. So, uh, so what did I do? <laughs> push <laughs> I was like, <laughs> ribs on the menu. <laughs> because this shit really does happen. And sometimes you cannot, as always, the standard advice that you see online on Red Pill, on Reddit, on YouTube, all this bullshit is usually just trash. Sometimes you can't run away. Like we could have run, okay? We could have run. Would you have run? Would anyone, like the drunk guys like crossing the road, would you have like, <laughs> would you have a run? No, you wouldn't have a bitch. Okay, best case scenario, anytime a man makes eye contact with you and he doesn't look friendly, 10 toes away but it's not realistic because one it sometimes that feels like social suicide because that feels awkward as f to like do it and you're gonna look like a fool sometimes so look but okay looking like a fool is is safer than getting your ass beat or beating someone getting put in prison fair enough but sometimes you won't even get like the brain like signal to run because i didn't in this point i didn't want to fight but i froze because there's three responses you can have in this type of situation and that is fight flight or freeze and i don't know about you but i am a freezer up until i fight i have never been a flight type of person you might be you might be the type of guy who f runs away but if you've been beat by your parents bro you're probably a freezer you probably like stand there just like waiting to get f hit by your dad bro and you can usually tell like one thing that that pops into mind is imagine when there's like a drunk white a f white guy obviously drunk ass white guy on a train being racist this has happened to me many times right he's being racist he, the moment he gets loud you will see the people who are in flight mode Lit uh, literally he gets loud his first word of being loud three four people will stand up and start running away everyone else is in either freeze or ready to fight mode i don't think most people are off flight i don't think most people would run away and i'm not going to tell you that stupid advice of oh, run away anytime you get in trouble bro sometimes you need to know how to defend yourself now it's unlikely that this drunk ass mother it's unlikely that he would have seriously harmed us but he could have because me and my friend froze and he he chose to push my friend what if he came and what if he knew how to fight what if he actually punched my friend with force what if he had a knife what do you have a 
gun. So it's time, you need to learn these steps. Now step zero, the prerequisite, is to learn how to fight. This is a prerequisite to becoming a man. Because if you cannot protect yourself or your loved ones, you are not a man, you're a liability. Now the best case scenario is to train specifically to defend yourself. And this, you'll be able to find it in different countries, but this generally is this martial arts sports club called Krav Maga. You can search this online on your like Google Maps or something. You'll probably be able to find a club nearby. This is probably one of the best ones to join if you specifically want to learn about self-defense. But at the very least, just do three months of any kind of striking martial arts. Striking means like, you know, hitting, okay? And martial arts would be like boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai. Do three months of any kind of striking. And if you want to be very, very well-rounded, couple that striking with any kind of grappling and groundwork, wrestling and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You'll be protected all round if you do this. Most people say just learn BJJ. Like BJJ, Brazilian jiu-jitsu has got like this, this cucky kind of, what would you say, circle jerk because of like Joe Rogan and everything and all the guys like BJJ, BJ, like it's overrated in this sense in my opinion. People say, okay, just train BJJ. A lot of the stuff that you learn in there, you will not be able to use in a street fight. Bro, get him into the perfect arm bar. You're about to snap his arm off. Congratulations, bro. You know what's gonna happen? His friend's gonna stomp on your face. He's gonna bite your dick off or something. Something like BJJ is only good in a street fight to literally just make sure you don't get put onto the ground. But the moment you're on the ground, you're trying to do some shit like playing chess with this guy's body bro his friend's gonna come and stab you in the back so this is the prerequisite step zero learn some martial arts learn at least some kind of striking some kind of grappling and so here is the the autistic way to, to implement this advice because i used to see this advice and i you know people on red pill would say okay learn martial arts and i'd be like yeah, yeah, yeah that sounds awesome and then i just would just not do it and so you need like this very specific like almost childish advice of exactly how do you start one Go on to Google Maps, search for the, the type of martial arts that seems interesting to you. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, kickboxing, boxing, Muay Thai, whatever. Just search for that. And on Google Maps, you'll be able to see the clubs that are nearby. Click on their website and almost all of them will have a free first day. And even if they don't, it'll be what? $10, $15, whatever. Just take some cash with you. You can see their timetable on their website, maybe their Facebook page, and just go to the first nearest class that you can attend. Don't overthink it. Don't think, okay, you've got to message them. Don't think, okay, wait, how do I know if it's, if it's going to be good? Specifically, Specifically, you need to go to their first free day and then you'll be able to tell from that point because you could find the best club in the world and it's really, really affordable. But if you don't go to the first day, you're never going to join. Or you could go to the first day and everyone is a tall asshole to you and then you don't want to go. But there's another club down the road that you, then you go to their first day. Everyone's really nice and you feel like you're leveling up anyway. You need to go to that first free day, usually free, sometimes take $10, $15 with you as soon as possible. Now, step one is anxiety and mindfulness because you've been reminded about this, this concept of danger that other people could harm you in this video. So I'm willing to bet that in the past five minutes, you've probably sweat more than normal. That since watching this video, your heartbeat's probably going a little bit faster. You've got this like weird sense of like, how do you say that word? Adrenaline, excitement. And you think that that's going to help you in these fights. And you're probably like, you've probably got this mindset right now. Like, oh, I could smash a workout. That feeling that you've got is anxiety. And you think it's productive. It's actually going to be the reason why you get dropped. Because think about the master fighter. Does he have anxiety? Does he have excitement? No, he's calm. He's stoic. He regulates his mind and his body. You think that you'd hit a fantastic workout with this rage. You know, the people who hurt you and you think about them and you get angry and you think you're gonna hit a fantastic workout because of that. No, it's mindfulness, flow, concentration, being focused. That's gonna help you to give you the best workout or even save your life in a fight. And you wanna know how I know this? Because I used to fuel my workouts with the thought of crushing the skull of the racist who tried to stab me like that was my go-to thoughts and i didn't have good workouts i was very distracted for them i never hit prs in those sessions you will get fatigued from thoughts and these type of thoughts don't energize you they don't make you feel good they don't give you confidence or strength or anything these type of thoughts mentally and physically literally physically like the, the real science is that they these type of thoughts will physically fatigue you then compare that to the times where you're so focused on your workout so mindful so so concentrated that you don't even change the song once on spotify you don't even touch your phone. You're hitting PR after PR. So in terms of preparing for fights or danger or being threatened, step one is long-term consistent meditation. This will help you always. And no matter what you want to do, literally pick anything that you want to do, which is completely random. And I'll find a way to explain how meditation will help you with it. It's, in, it's insane that people don't meditate. But here's your chance. Meditate every single day for the rest of your life. There and then in that moment, in that situation where about to go down and some guy's swearing at you, some guy's being racist. Regulate your mind and your body. I'm not gonna make this a weird bullshit guide where I'm gonna tell you like the 10 steps to do and, and you know, watch out for his shoulder and- Shut your fucking mouth. One hopefully simple thing that you can remember, breathe, that's it. Just at that point when shit is kicking off, if you just remind yourself to just breathe, a nice big deep breath into the 
stomach, like into your balls, as Elliot Holtz used to say. Breathe into your fucking balls at that point. Because when shit's really kicking off, you're taking shallow breaths. That's gonna not only make you like weaker and, and more fatigued, but you're gonna look weaker. You're gonna get that closed body language. Start cowering over. That's gonna make you look like less of a threat, less able to defend yourself. When it's kicking off, big breath from your nose into your stomach, open up your body. I know that that seems way, like weirdly simple advice, but it could potentially save your life because it's gonna bring you back into regulating your mind and your body. Then step two is body language and situational awareness. If you aren't even observing his body language and the situation around you, what's gonna happen? You're gonna wake up being like, oh, but what happened? You didn't even realize that his friend just hit you from the side. You have to keep your eyes open and you have to stay aware of the entire situation, not just a tunnel vision on the guy in front of you. You can generally, if you ever have the, the curiosity to watch street fights, you can see that like guys who watch football do this where they like, they'll stare at each other or they'll like get so close that they could almost kiss each other. Like this is the other guy's forehead and they like do this like the fucking rams. This tunnel vision is gonna get you hit from the side by his friend. So again, I'm not gonna overload you with information that I did some research before this and everyone said, okay, well, if, if his shoulder drops by this and if he does this with his hand, no, it's stupid. It's too much. You're not, like anyone who's been in a real fight, is like you're not going to remember this weird shit that I tell you right now, okay? His shoulder's gonna drop and if, if, if he looks in a 13 degree angle, you're not gonna remember. So I'm just gonna tell you one main rule and I think this is the one that you can remember, which is never let anyone get to the side or behind you. You quickly observe the entire situation, see like who's who seems to be on his side. Just make sure no one is behind you or to the side of you. Now, step three is to avoid. And this is the step, this is the reason why the first two stories that I told you didn't exactly get violence. You can avoid a lot of these aggressive, violent fight situations through social skills. Because let's put you into this scenario right now. You're in the middle of a club, alcohol involved. Alcohol is always fucking involved in fights, right? And someone starts chatting shit. Yo, and so you're in the middle of the club, you're enjoying yourself, someone gets aggressive onto you. All the Redditors will tell you to run away, this guy says f*** you to you, and you're like, <laughs> you f***ing run out of the club, okay? You're not gonna do that, especially because in, in the situations where fights are happening, it's usually like a packed place where you can't literally run, like you'd have to like fully like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You're not gonna do that. You wouldn't need to, because let's say this big ass f***ing meathead says, yo, you just bumped into me, what do you do? This is exactly what you do. You hold your hands up, and say, yo, I'm sorry. He'll swear even more. He'll even say something that like triggers your f***ing insecurity. You've got gyno. I watch your YouTube channel, Hamza. You've got gyno. I see you talking about it. Whatever he says, you almost take it as like nonchalance. Like his words don't mean anything. You keep your hands up. You say, I'm sorry. And you start walking away. You do not turn to the side or to the back. This is the time when if you like say, oh, you know, you get scared and you start walking away, you're going to get fucking socked in the back of your head. That's happened to me twice in the same night as well by the same fucking people. There's no rules in a street fight. There's no like, oh, you know, you can't hit him from the back, lad. Like they'll take the advantage that they can get. And if you're looking at them, like I know it seems a bit socially weird to kind of stick your hands up like this and maybe step away from them whilst looking at them completely fine because if that saves you from turning around and one of them just coming up and hooking you in the jaw it's worth it and the reason specifically whilst we're holding our hands up like this is because the observation of other people now imagine this cctv cameras in the club right think about what they're gonna see usually these cameras are in like 140p black and white right all they're gonna see is like you do this and this guy's coming at you like this who's gonna look like the the perpetrator the aggressor the people around you who potentially could jump in and, and help either one of you who are they more likely to help the guy who looks angry or the guy who's like doing this and also this is a very safe like if your hands are literally up like this you're like this right this is a very safe position for you to be in you can catch attacks like this you can block your face you can even throw much much fast, faster than if you've got your hands like i see some stupid ass video clips i used to have an obsession with watching street fight videos and some of them it's like the guy would like want to show that you know he was confident and stuff and so he'd be he'd walk to this guy like with his hands like up here with his chin stuck out and so of course the other guy would lightly hook him the guy falls oh i see you see some fights with like the guys originally he's got his hands in his pocket like a dumbass no we want to shortcut every little every detail so that we can protect ourselves and the best way to protect yourself is literally you know you keep your hands up up here boxing stance if you've already got your hands here you're almost already there straight away and so in this situation this guy's yelling at you you're gonna apologize you're gonna walk away you're gonna keep your eye on him you just walk away like, oh, i'm sorry bro i didn't mean to bump into you my bad bro he's gonna start swearing say something racist my bad bro i'm sorry just start walking away while I like looking at the guy that was you avoiding that was you like trying to leave the situation what if he follows you what if he gets closer to you that is when you get loud and i found that this is actually like a little bit of a barrier that you have to break to to skyrocket how effective you are in in this type of situation this guy's getting loud he's getting like you know 
like angry and his blood's rushing. He's getting ready for the fight. You're like really quiet and reserved. Now it's more than just him shouting at you. It's more just than him swearing. Now he's walking towards you. Now he's becoming like a full on danger. This is when you start to get loud and you start, you start to shout, but you start shout almost like defensive victim stuff, which is like, yo, don't step towards me. Stay away from me. Do not step closer to me. I don't want any problems. Stay away. Again, CCTV, potentially like club bouncers, potentially any kind of like ob observers, anyone who jump in, hear this shit. And at this point, if he's still walking towards you, he's going to hurt you. Unless if you hurt him first. If you can run at this point, try and run. But honestly, the advice I give you at this point, like, like you're not going to be able to remember this. At this point, honestly, if you've been in these situations before, there's, there's no more thoughts. If there's ever a time that you get into a flow state, it's at a point like this. That all thoughts switch off. Your legs are shaking like this. And you're getting so ready you don't get to think at this point if you're a runner if you're someone who, who seems to tap into the flight mode okay fantastic best case scenario you might not be i'm not at this point personally for me if you're anything like me i freeze like this is like i i start standing still i can't even speak or anything i just kind of like stare at the person this is from like disassociation from my like, childhood trauma like long story and shit. like you probably can experience that so i freeze at this point i freeze up until it is time to fight and so step four is strike first and this now i'm going to teach you exactly how to hit which i've never seen any other guide all these guides like if you're if you're watching this video you you want to know this specific like gory detail of what hits to throw right and all these guys every time i'd see them and they'd always just say like oh don't get into fights guys oh, don't get into fights uh, uh before you fight go on google and, and search up the laws and the legislations like what the f these redditors actually saying this shit. like oh before you defend yourself go search up the self-defense laws in your area shut the f up bro if i'm like this if i've walked away from this guy and he's still coming towards me and he's got into like literally this far away bro this guy is going to hurt me like this guy will f you up and i'm not even talking about his friends who have already like walked to the outside of you now again if you can run fantastic but a lot of times you can't and don't stand there going on uh, wait wait one second bro one second let me just um uh, what's the government website let me just double check can i defend myself or what's the the section 3.8 law or some bullshit no at this point you are in danger and so the exact hits that you're going to go with most people will do a very random like stupid boxing hit right they, most people have never done boxing and so they'll do usually some kind of like long range hook which is one of the worst hits you could throw in this area what you'd instead go for is the side of your elbow right about here this bit here this is one of the hardest parts of your body here specifically to the side of the chin now again most people would almost automatically go for the nose because it just seems like where you'd go for the side of the chin will make that guy spin like a beyblade like i said before the side of the chin is how you get knocked out in boxing one of the like the most fundamental things is, is to keep your chin down if you fight like this you're gonna get twatted you keep your chin down like this most guys won't do this in a street fight you keep your chin like down like this it protects it if someone gets into the distance that you could elbow them which you've got to think is like it's not there's no distance right if like i couldn't even elbow the camera right now you get what i mean so if i could elbow someone who's coming towards me aggressively like they deserve to be elbowed now of course the disclaimer of like oh but check with the police first like no i don't care bro if someone is this close where they're, they're this far away from you after you walking away from them they're, they're legally following you at this point i don't care about the laws at this point it's my survival instinct to neutralize this threat exactly what you're going to do once it comes to this point i hope it doesn't come but if it fully does that you someone is this close to you they're about to f hit you bro usually when someone's walking up to you aggressively there's usually a bit of a gap like they won't walk up and as soon as they've got range like this much range they won't throw it like this usually with every like if you go and search for like some street fight video they'll come up for a split second you know do some like some bullshit like this stick their hands down and go like oh bro and then they'll hit you you have like that split second to act first if you absolutely have to so you're going to slightly step in with your with your front foot at this point you should be in like you know the full-on boxer stance which is literally just stick your right if you're right-handed your right foot slightly back your left foot slightly forward we won't go into like too much detail with that shit, but pretty much as soon as it comes to this point take a little step in right elbow down a little bit and just swing hard as f against the chin. We're not even trying to hit the chin, okay? We're not trying to hit the chin. We're trying to go through it. Imagine you are like bursting through, not even connecting, but bursting through a door. We don't want to hit the chin. We're going to like literally connect with it. If you can do like a little visualization, like success visualization beforehand through the chin, fully imagine that his head is going to like twist like this. And I know this is like gory detail that might be like unacceptable for YouTube, but better him than you. That is all you do. The one hit to his chin, that, that will fully drop the guy. Even if you're not very weak, even if the guy's way bigger than you, to the side of the chin will fully, fully drop the person to the floor. It always will. After this, step five, one of the most important steps, escape. Now you've got to play the game of f 
escaping his friends, him, when he, he probably will stand back up depending on how good your strike was. The police, the bouncers, anyone who's trying to fight you. Because at this point, his friends will chase you. He will call someone who will come with a knife or a gun to come and get you. So hit first, hit hard, then escape. This is when you, like I found that you can almost tap into that, that running mode again. You can tap into the flight mode. Usually, at least for me, the few times I've been into this situation, I fully freeze, then I go into fight mode. And after the fight mode, after I've hit the guy hard once, I only ever hit people once. After that point, bro, f and sprint all the way. That's your cardio. That's your high int interval, high intensity interval training back home. Go get some chicken wings. Ribs on the menu. <laughs> Do not stay around to be the victor. Do not shout and start celebrating. Because I see this so many times. In, in uh, bro, I went to the club many, many times in my student days. There would be a fight like oh, like, oh, like like every week, right? There'd be a fight like every week. You know, everyone shouting, everyone like there's crowds watching everything. One guy wins, and I'm like, yo, like yo, he's won, right? Fantastic, right? This dumbass would win the fight and he just kind of starts shouting and he just stay there and he like, you know, like look at the guys who he's dropped and, you know, do some bullshit. So what do you think happened? The bouncers come up, they, they grab this guy, they like put their knee on this guy's neck. They, they manhandle him. You see this guy like, you know, two big ass bouncers like carrying his arms, like, dragging him by his hair and stuff. He's like going through all the piss on the floor and shit. Looks like a fool. They just take him straight outside and then straight into the police car. Another time, they're fighting, not in the club right now, but just outside the club on the road. They're fighting and everything. One guy literally gets a solid hit on some other guy. Police car whizzes up. This guy's like just shouting and everything. Gets arrested straight away. As soon as you hit, like as soon as it's possible, bro, Sprint. Sprint the f away. Do not stay around to be the victor. Do not stay around to finish off the night. If it's a club, whatever it is, like get the f out, party, whatever it is, get out because you could annihilate this guy. Let's say he's passed out for the entire night. It's not gonna happen, but let's say he's passed out for the entire night. His friends will stab you. Like some, something worse will happen. The police will be called, the bouncers, some, something will happen. Get out. You've won, you've profited at that point. That was the exact thought I had when, when I hit this guy who came up and pushed my friend. It was straight away, I got the thought, okay, we've profited, like we've already won. Let's get the f out of you. Like I don't need to stay and fight his friends now like i've already won if i leave right now it's like i've left with like profit like there was a good return on investment for this but if i stay like what what like what is this to stay for potentially me get hit too i don't want that as soon as you get you connect with that hit you get the f out of the situation now of course i'm gonna give the disclaimer i wanted to do this at last because i don't want to waste your time with this disclaimer ah, i'm not encouraging people to fight don't fight bro it's stupid but this isn't about fighting even though i've titled it like that this is about protecting yourself like you will never be the person who who is the antagonizer you will never be the person who's the guy who's shouting who's loud and who picks on someone but it will happen to you like multiple times through your life it will happen that you'll have a time when there is a guy who's picking on you who is aggressive on you and if you don't know some of this knowledge like that's the shit that you overthink about for, for 10 20 for the rest of your life that's the shit that gives you anxiety for the rest of your life i highly highly recommend if you want to take the actionable step right now you do that thing which I said in, in step zero. You go right now, search up the martial arts club and book in the first session. Like you don't even need to book in. Generally, you can just go show up to the first session. I can't even explain to you how much that has changed my mindset. Like my anxiety has dropped by a significant, honestly about 80% in just the last couple of months. Like it was already making good progress and it's like training kickboxing. I'm not even good at kickboxing, right? I'm, not, I'm literally, I'm not even good. Like I've, I've done like two months of training, maybe two and a half months, but it gives you this almost nonchalant feeling where you now know you don't need to overthink about it. You know that you don't need to stress or be anxious about it. Cause I know like what my sort of capabilities are. I don't need to plan the fight anymore. Anxiety is kind of like planning something bad that could happen. So you, you know, you can be really aware of it and you can try and save yourself from the pain. It's been almost ticked off. It's like, yeah, you don't need to plan because you, you could probably, you know, not, not, not great. But someone could stab the shit out of you, obviously, but you'd be relatively, if you had like an okay chance, you'd be relatively fine. We don't need to preemptively think of like some dangerous situation anymore. That's very life-changing for me. And I wish that for you. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it.